Hi, my name is Burak Chakmak. Uh, I have been working on sustainability for the, for the, for the past 13 years for uh, fashion brands, including Gap to all the luxury brands on the PPR group, uh, which includes Gucci to Bottega Veneta to Yves Saint Laurent and Balenciaga. Some of it is introducing a few new products to the market. For example, uh, Yves Saint Laurent brand, which has always been known for its uh, promotion of uh, empowering of women, uh, is also looking at environmental issues. And one of the things they introduced was the new vintage collection, which is being sold at Barney's in New York. So the, this is a collection that's using recycled materials, also creating pieces from their archives. So looking back in the brand, but also uh, reusing materials and addressing some environmental issues. Uh, so that's one start, but we are also seeing a lot of new materials that are being used. Just recently we've seen Manolo Blanik introduce eco shoes uh, that are using uh, discarded tilapia skins, raffia uh, and uh, items like cork. Uh, but we are also seeing a lot more on the innovation side. Uh, for example, I just met with a company that's doing dyeing uh, for synthetic materials and they introduced a brand new technique which is the first waterless dye. They're using carbon dioxide to dye materials directly which is eliminating the need for using any water at all but also significantly reducing the energy use. So this is a perfect example of how can you address some of these issues also in the supply chain at the production level. But we also saw innovation at the product end, uh, which is facing to the consumer. Uh, one example has been Sergio Rossi creating the first 100% uh, biodegradable luxury uh, shoe, which was a partnership with Fraunhofer Institute in Germany. And they use a material called liquid wood, uh, as well as uh, natural oils uh, from plants to create the sole and the heel of the product and by using uh, vegetable tanned leather and no harmful glues they were able to create a product that's 100% uh, biodegradable but also having no negative impact when it's also biodegrading. And uh, in addition to this, uh, we can also mention new techniques such as uh, using laser for treating genes, for example. So again, there's the concept of waterless genes. Uh, companies are looking at how to eliminate the need for uh, such a valuable resource for water, but also have the same treatment. So what they're using it for is doing different applications on the genes to have the stone wash effect and different effects uh, which is giving the same desired result uh, without the negative environmental impact. I think what's uh, really exciting is to see that uh, we are moving more and more uh, looking at how do we bring in innovation to address some of these issues and I gave a few examples of this and uh, there is a need for investing in the long term to uh, promote these solutions from the business side as well as from the government. So in my previous role uh, within Gucci Group, one thing I have created was uh, the first PhD uh, in Central St. Martin's focused on future technologies for sustainable luxury. And the aim for this is in the long term continue investing in research for new materials that are not harmful but also addressing the need for innovation and uh, desirability for the luxury brands. I don't, I don't want to say it's a question, but I guess there's an assumption that luxury brands already feel like uh, they are a sustainable brand because they are not promoting first consumption, because they are creating pieces that are timeless, and because uh, they never uh, assume that their products are going to be disposed of. Uh, what I'm trying to give visibility to is it's beyond just disposability and the waste creation that they have to con they have to be concerned about from everything on what type of materials go into the product from chemicals to uh, also the impact of the product uh, but also their ability to set trends and how they can use this to actually create a positive environment for sustainability in the long term for the consumer. So I feel like sooner uh, than later we are going to see luxury leading on sustainability for the fashion industry. Good question. <laughs> uh, it would be great to f figure out how to how to find that tipping balance between when is it too much. So innovation around understanding uh, 
the impact you're having through your production and the use of materials and knowing that you shouldn't go beyond a certain level uh, to ensure that you're sustaining the equilibrium within the environment. I don't know if there's a technology that can address that, but we will see.